do and um, just give you a little uh, overview of, of how we're running and promoting the webinars. So you see off our main website here, databasics.com.au, uh, over here we've got our blog section and you'll see that our um, approach to providing webinars and content uh, via the blog is to first uh, promote uh, whatever content, like you can see that um, this the top 10 most uh, important features of DAM. Uh, when we did the survey, we first put out a blog here and we used the blog to promote the, the webinar. Uh, when the webinar is done, uh, then Entra will put in a little message in the top right hand corner. You can see that if we come down to here, see down here, webinar recording available. So this shows you any of our blogs which have got an associated webinar. Um, you will see on the image there in how it's, um, how it's been shown. Now this is, man, I am actually corrected. This is the fifth webinar of the year. We've done one on the FMCG marketplace, fast moving consumer goods. We did two on the releases of flight. We did the DARS one, that uh, was one that uh, Arez did there. And uh, we're up to number five, which is the top 10 most important damn features. Great. Okay, jump back to our main screen over here. Now, and I will be swapping the screen around a couple of times because I'll be showing content from a range of uh, different sources here. What I do uh, intend to do in this webinar, ra rather than just repeating the facts that you can get off the blog, uh, I really want to uh, provide extra additional information past that. So I'm going to do that in um, three sort of passes. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about how we constructed uh, the survey and where we were going when we were first putting together the survey. This is um, the, I should say, the this, this top 10 features really backs upon the uh, top 10 mistakes blog and webinar that we did a couple of years ago, which was hugely successful. It's one of the most um, you know, highest sought after piece of content on our website is the top 10 mistakes and we hope the top 10 features uh, challenges that. It just shows you how people are really interested in true content. Uh, they will, this is a truly generic presentation. I won't be talking about any products or anything like that. And um, now then, when we um, put these uh, webinars together, um, we, we go through a process of, of analysing what sort of content, how we're going to research it. And I first have to, uh, you know, hats off to Andra here. She did most of the work for the top 10 feature. She's um, really doing a great job for data basics there as our media manager. She, um, you know, like, like uh, I have to say, a lot of the content, a lot of the starting point for this, uh, uh, this, this um, project uh, was crowdsourced. We did have a lot of the people from Data Basics generally contribute to the initial sets of questions and also from uh, a short range of uh, selected trial customers that we contacted and got their help. Uh, but, you know, Entra did 90% of the, the work and um, created some insanely good graphics here, too, which I must admit is stunning. Now then, I've, um, now then, so we'll talk a little bit about how we constructed the um, webinar. I'll then swap over and uh, go and show the infographic that Entra created. Uh, again, really great thing. And, and go through the top 10 features. That's what most people want to know. And I'll be putting in, um, you know, my slant on um, why this, this, this feature fitted in there and, and what relevance that has. And I think that's where we'll be adding some real value over the basic uh, results. And then uh, what I decided here, and this comes back from a few of the other surveys that we've done, is where people actually really want to see the um, core survey results. So I'm going to jump into SurveyMonkey and I'm going to show you uh, what the analysis coming out of SurveyMonkey is. And that is something that you won't get from the blog and from any other media, uh, you'll only get on this webinar. So you'll be getting um, some extra value there. Okay, and we seem to have whole range of people logged in. Everybody seems to be able to hear me okay. And um, nobody's raising their hand yet. So I will uh, jump in here. Just 
adjusting my um, screen over here just so I can keep a track of, of any questions people raise. Now, the, the first, um, as I said before, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about you know, where we were going when we uh, constructed this, this uh, project. So I'm going to go down to this slide here. Okay then. So uh, this, this shows the results from uh, the, the webinar and it shows which are the top 10 uh, features. It shows prominently on the blog there. Uh, but very importantly, and this is when we were first constructing it, we thought, you know, how are we going to do this? Are we just going to list out a whole lot of features and get people just to vote on them? Uh, or, you know, we decided we'd do some grouping. And, you know, we put some uh, thought into this and we came up with these three groups. And I think this is really quite interesting, you know, this was to see how the results then justified our grouping of these features into different areas because you can alternatively look at these results and think about, well, you know, just boiling it down to one out of three things of what was most important, you know. So, um, okay then, what's in blue here is the user experience. We had four uh, features in the user experience uh, um, area and three of those got voted into the top 10 and one of them got clearly voted as the most important feature. So straight out of the box, we can tell you that over everything else, what is the most important thing to these 37 people that, that responded to this survey was the user experience. And I think that's a huge take home message and, and in my discussions with, with DAM users and potential DAM users, I'm going to reiterate that a lot. And it is the, the way of the 21st century. You can't force somebody to use a solution, they have to want to use it. A DAM system can be quite laborious to use because it involves a lot of um, metadata entry and a whole lot of other cataloging processes. And if the user experience is not good, people will just walk away and you will basically be wasting your money on a project. So that's really interesting and a very simple take home message. User experience is very important. Now the next two areas down here, and we sort of tossed around these then, uh, and I'll talk about functionality first. Functionality, these are like single capabilities that might appear like a menu item in a digital asset management system or something like that. You know, individual things that we think are really important. Capabilities, a little broader scope, you know, like not a single menu item, but generally a comment about the overall capability of the solution. And um, this again, um, it shows a really interesting point, functionality. There was um, eight points in functionality that we, we listed out 20 features altogether. I hope to get all of this right. Um, there were eight in each of capabilities and functionality and four in uh, user experience. And you can see that functionality came in third, right? Only three of the eight features got voted into the top 10 and none of them made it into the top three. And I'm not surprised by that. You know, like if you look at DAM systems out there, all DAMs do a whole lot of things that are really great, but it's not any one single menu item that really cooks it for a user. Right? If you were trying to boil down a DAM into it's got to be able to do this, that or the other thing, you are probably missing uh, the point. And it's a bit of a message, like um, we here at Data Basics, you know, as a commercial band supplier, we get all of these tenders and RFPs and things like this sent to us. Gee, we got one sent to us just yesterday. And it's around about 10 pages and all these list of questions about do you do this, do you do that, do you do that. It's asking us about functionality. And, you know, I'm going to suggest to these people that they have a look at um, their webinar recording, they have a look at the blog and they really think about what they're asking for because you know, coming up with a whole list of functionality that they think is going to satisfy their user base is probably wrong, it's the wrong approach. These 37 people that voted on this um, survey did not rate any individual functionality higher than item number four and overall functionality scored lowest out of the three groupings. Capabilities, okay, capabilities are overall groupings of functionality, capable, you know, how well 
suited will this product be to your needs? And you can see there, uh, it took out uh, points two and three and had four out of the top 10 uh, features. Um, so, you know, capability overrides functionality. The users want to be able to achieve an outcome and in many times, how the individual steps to achieve that outcome isn't as important as the overall outcome. And I know that might sound a really obvious statement to say, um, but you can see how people have voted on it here. And I think this should you know, provide a lot of feedback to people evaluating different sorts of solutions or how they're gonna roll out a, a product and start thinking more about um, the overall outcome rather than the individual step. Okay then, so that's uh, my little intro about um, you know how we group those three different areas together and how when you first look at the results, how that gives us an overview. I'm now going to jump over to the infographic if I can find it over here, here it is, great. Uh, this is infographic, great infographic that uh, Onto created and swap my sharing screen over to here. And okay, now I'm going to go through uh, the individual points one by one. So um, we're, I'm gonna try to keep this down to about a minute or so for each one. And as said uh, at the introduction, at the end of this, I'm gonna jump over and then so you show you Survey Monkey and uh, all of the um, discrete level responses that people provided as you look at the, the, the mechanics of the analysis here. Okay then, now then, voted number one, and you can see it was 95% of everybody. I believe the, the facts will show that 35 out of 37 people voted for ease of use as being the most important damn feature of all. And I think that's a real big take home message. And again, it's not surprising for me. Uh, in, it's again, what I said before, it's a 21st century thing. Um, usability, ease of use, uh, somebody being able to uh, basically sidle up to a piece of software running on their computer, whatever sort of computer they've got, and get some functionality, some outcome from it is the most important thing. And to get there, you need ease of use. And we see this with lots of organizations, particularly when you try to deploy a product out to a very large community, it's only gonna work if it's easy to use. Uh, the days of doing intensive training and taking people through a solution and you know, you click here and click there, so it's all out the window. If somebody can't um, pick up a piece of, of technology, start using it straight away, it gets tossed and they just look for some other, other process, other outcome, and um, you know, it will mean that the, the overall project is a failure. So coming back to all of those people, um, you know, that might be thinking about um, implementing a dam solution, boil it all down to ease of use. For those of you out there with the dam solution that have been thinking about is why aren't my users using this solution as much as I hope, think about ease of use. And I think if you just stick with one, one factor uh, about your overall solution, that will give you uh, a lot of focus to reach out and get more users engaged faster and, and keep them happier. Okay, the next three items down here, and you can see that Entra's really nicely grouped these together. All of these got 75% or more, right? So out of those 37, um, something like um, 31 or 32 people uh, voted for these. And, um, so it's another interesting fact as you go through these uh, responses, how well grouped the res uh, responses were. And you, know, you can see um, that people really can focus in and group what is most important, what is second most important, and then bring up the rest after that. So integration, permissions, sharing, and then searchability. All four of those uh, came in as 75% uh, or three quarters of all responses. Now then, the first one, integration. 
And this is fantastic. Uh, for me, I've been in the dam industry for too many years now, and um, integration is something that, say, 10 years ago, everybody that was forecasting where dam was going to go in the future, they'd all be saying it's integration. And you know, some of the original dammies, uh, that's the people elected um, in, in America as being um, people that sort of created and, and, and really um, plotted out the future of digital asset management. Uh, they were all talking about integration 10 years ago. And now you can see it's rated there number, number two. So people want an easy to use solution and they want it integrated into the rest of their organisation's infrastructure. Really great response there and I'm really uh, keen to see that the people that have answered on, on this survey you know, could see that clearly, that, that having DAM really as, you know, and I've been saying it for a while, it's really digital asset management is infrastructure to an organisation. You shouldn't be thinking of a DAM solution as being a point solution that does this or that in your organisation. You should see it as being infrastructure that allows a whole lot of other processes to wrap around it and to come to a, a meaningful outcome. All right, next one down, permissions. Okay, and as much as integration pleases me, permissions. Okay, then this one raised my eyebrows. And it's also good. Um, it shows you that people are really sophisticated. They are perceiving that a dam system needs to have really good permissions because you can see the next one down, sharing. Sharing in context only works when you have correct permissions. And that might sound like a little bit of an academic thing to say, but this is what we see again and again in any digital asset management um, project that we put into place is that, you know, it's all about sharing out content. You know, you don't hoard content for no other reason. It's all about sharing, which is the number four item down there. But why an organization typically put in a dam is that they wanted to have the confidence that when they're sharing out content, they were going to share it out to the right people, the right content, and be able to do that in the right methodology. And getting the right people and the right content means that they need to have permissions. And it's not like the average user is going to struggle with some terrible sort of permissions interface. It needs to be running in the background. It needs to be part of the actual ingestion process that an asset is allocated a certain amount of permissions in, in just the general process of the administrators bringing in the content. And uh, then how the distribution is being set up, again, that's got, got to be intuitive in that the distribution methods have got to pee back upon the inherent permissions of the solution. So that's a really sophisticated call by our population to pick out permissions as number three. Good on you. Sharing, as said, okay, then sharing, I've said a little bit about this. Without sharing, without collaboration, why would you have a why would you have a dam? You know, like you've really got to have these sort of things in the solution. Um, it's it's all about collaboration. It's all about sharing. So you need to have those capabilities. And it is interesting uh, as you get more and more new dam solutions out there, more new users who haven't been exposed to you know two decades of the history of dam and what everybody's been talking about over that period of time. You know, they all pick out sharing as the most important thing. You know, like going from a file system, what do they want to do next? They want to be able to share out that content without having to attach it to an email or do something dreadful like that. They want to be able to easily share content out via social media, via a whole lot of other processes, uh, just like you, you know, share something out on you know, Facebook or something like that. It's got to be a lot easier uh, than a finding a file on a file server. So, you know. Sharing, not surprised by that one at all. Okay, then now then we get down to five. Now the five is the last one that rated up in the uh, top three quarters. Uh, easy, the, the searchability of the solution. Now then, am I surprised about this? One of the original uh, vendors in, in digital asset management, uh, two decades ago when they, when they came up with their logo and their catchphrase, their catchphrase was, can't find it, can't use it. And it was defined what digital asset management was about 20 years ago and being voted in as number five here. 
it tells you that it's still what digital asset management is about 20 years later in the year 2017. Searchability, you know, and again, what I just made a comment about sharing and, and made a, a comparison to people keeping files on a file server. Well, okay, and one of the big problems with the file server, server approach is it's the searchability, it's just not there. So people want to be able to easily search content. They just want to be able to go to whatever their, their easy to use BAM interface is, plug in something like a search phrase, they want to look for blue or something like that, and they want to find the right content. Can't find it, can't use it. And if they can't find what they're after, they're not going to go back there. So another key feature um, for all of you people out there thinking about future or um, current DAM solutions, you want to make it um, more popular with your users, think about that searchability. Okay then, then now then, the next group of res uh, results here, and I'll bring these down into this group of four. These all scored um, something around about two thirds of the results. So somewhere between um, into the 60s or the very high 50s, okay, percentages of everybody that voted. And you know, this is where we also start to see uh, more functionality. Um, the sharing was one of the functionality. Uh, the automation and the bulk metadata we see as functionality here. So this is where people are starting to pick out individual um, you know, capabilities. Um, you know, but then you know, the ninth one down here, preview, uh, that's a user experience. So you still see user experience uh, coming up there. Um, now then, so, and, and I think this is where we start to get some very interesting results and this really does show that the people who responded to this survey were existing users of a DAM solution. I wouldn't expect that um, people who haven't yet used the DAM solution to come up with some of these uh, answers here. Okay, starting from the top there, multiple file formats. Well, okay, and Entra said it here, uh, all of it here. Um, what really differentiates a DAM from any other record management or content management solution is that it is all about different types of media. It's all about those different file formats. And these days it's not just a file format as in a PDF and a PSD and an AVR. It's about different types of media, whether it's video, whether it's sound, whether it's 3D, whether it's um, visualization, whether it's virtual reality, whether it, well, what is it? What is, what is this? And with a dam, people want to stick it all in there. You know, that's the point of a dam. If you can't stick all of those different file formats into a dam, it really raises a question about whether you've got the right dam. It's a very important thing. And the dam too, the dam's got to respond to all of these different file formats uh, equally. So if you click on something, it's got to do its thing. It's got to play the video, play the sound, preview the file, do a 3D presentation. You know, if you have to treat each different uh, record in your DAM differently because of different file format, that's not going to be easy to use. All right, automation. Now, I found this really interesting. There's a huge argument goes on in the back rooms of DAM providers about how much of a dam is about the media and how much is about workflow and automation and we say it here is, is uh, automation is, is basically workflow. You, you automate a set of processes, you create workflow. So automation doubles with workflow. Okay, um, now then, and it only got voted number seven. All right, if this, this and, and we see again, a lot of the people looking at new dam solutions will put up workflow right up the top there as you know, top three you know, requirements. Is it really that important? Is it really that important compared to something really simple like sharing or searchability? Right? And as voted by these people, it's not. Um, automation is important, but it's not that important. So, you know, and, and we do a lot of automation here at Database. It's one of our core functionalities that we do. And it's, you know, and again, and I think this is showing the experience of the users, Automation only really works when you cook up something very specific for you know the environment that that dam is going to work in. Uh, you know, if you look at what sort of automation can be delivered generically out of a dam solution, a lot of it is just a close miss at really what a customer needs to make the solution work best. 
you know, really when you look at automation, you're almost definitely looking at something sort of beyond being able to click on a few buttons. Uh, it gets to some sort of bespoke development work. Okay? So very interesting that that, that automation didn't get rated uh, further up the list. Now then, the next one down. And I have two comments about the next one down. That is just a crazy graphic that Ontra has come up with there. Bolt metadata edit, and she has absolutely canned it in one. That's a brilliant graphic to indicate what bulk metadata editing is all about. I would have never have thought. Really, hats off, Ontra. That's, that's a fabulous graphic. Second point. Now then, for such a you know really bulk metadata edit, you know that is a menu item that many dams have. And it's not something like, say, if somebody sends us an RFP and they've got a hundred questions or something, usually somewhere in the hundred they ask about bulk metadata. Often not, you know? It's not something that pops up in front of people's minds. But this just shows you uh, the people who answered this survey are experienced veteran dam users. They know that for any dam to be successful, you need to be able to do these important back office tasks. And one of the primary big back office staff is doing bulk metadata edits. You're going to have content coming in from a whole lot of different sources. It's going to have most of the metadata in it from whatever processes you put in there, which is really great. And then you've got to group all of that stuff together. You've got to apply in bulk a range of different metadata to set permissions, to set the distribution, to how people can share it to the digital rights management, to expiry dates, and you've got to do that in bulk. So it's got to work well. And that, that I wouldn't have thought was going to be in the top 10, but I think it's a really indicator that these, the people who voted for these top 10 are really experienced dam users. All right. All right, easy preview. So this is where we get to the trail enders. Well, okay then, I'm not surprised, right? Um, at the same point, what would a dam be if it didn't preview a file? Like I was saying with the different file formats up there, when you click on a file, it's got to do its thing. It's got to preview a graphic. It's got to play the video. It's got to whatever it does. Um, if a dam didn't preview, would it be a dam? Um, I don't think it would be. But it is surprising the number of people out there proposing solutions, dam solutions that don't provide previews. Um, and it's something that we often have when we meet a customer who's on the bounce from their first foray into you know, implementing a dam solution and there wasn't a way of previewing all file formats. And we're quite stunned at how they managed to cope for all that period of time they did cope. You must be able to preview a file, otherwise it's pretty useless. Now then, the last point I find really interesting, and this one scored okay, and so it was just above 50%, right? it's 54% customizability. Uh, okay then, and this really tells you that um, these experienced DAM users, they really understood that DAM isn't a generic sort of thing. You've really got to have a solution that fits into an organization to make it successful. And I agree, and you really see these days a separation in the waters between high-end sophisticated dams that must be customizable, and um, what I would call more instant or grab-and-go type of dams, more like the SAS model, uh, that is what it is. It does a range of functionality very well, and, but it isn't something that you are either gonna take the time to customize because you really want to start using a solution and be successful and you don't want to go and do this whole trip of customization. Uh, and you know, so there's a real separation in the users of DAM out there. And you know, over the next few years, I think we're really going to maybe even see digital asset management be split into sophisticated DAMs, people who want customization, and ones that don't want customization and want a damn solution that is more ready to go, a grab and go type of solution. And you know, this is, you know, and, and when you look at uh, people, you know, considering dam for the first time and they're weighing up the two, it's a real difficult call to make, um, but it's a very simple process that I think from our end, 
uh, is when somebody comes up with a 40-page document that tells you what their dam is, most of that content is going to be talking about how it can be customised. You know, they're in the high-end, sophisticated dam area. When somebody comes up with half a page, 10 points or something like that, they're in the ready-to-go to type of dam, the grab-and-go sort of solution, and they're not going to want to highly customise a solution. They, they just don't need it. So it's interesting that that feature got uh, voted, but it is also reflective of uh, this user base that uh, voted on this would be very experienced dam vendors that are seeing the need for customization and are probably from you know, well entrenched into using highly sophisticated dams. Okay, so that's gone through that. Now then, what I want to jump over to next and do this in the next Okay, so now we're looking at SurveyMonkey and the underlying responses. So you can see I've expanded out the, the responses here. You can see we had question one, which was the user experience, four questions there. Go down to functionality, the questions there, and then capabilities down here. You can see the individual uh, percentages and the number of responses for each one. Uh, and um, then the first thing I'm going to point out is the number of times any of the respondents added their own comments. So I think uh, Entra told me that in every single survey, there were four locations that people could add in extra comments. And out of all of the 37 people that responded, there was only a total of eight comments made. And if you consider that they have four opportunities, one for each of the three categories, and then one general area, only eight responses were made. Have a look at this. The, mo the lowest voted uh, capability was built in back, and that got nine votes. Right? So people adding their own comments, that was only eight of them, rated less than any other answer that we provided. So what does that tell you? Okay, uh, does it tell us, uh, well, the pessimistic view is to say that people didn't feel like typing, but you can see that, you know, like that they only needed to type a few words there. I, don't, I sort of dismiss that sort of one. Um, really, I think what this tells you is that uh, the deep thought that we put into this survey first to come up with our 20 possible um, items to vote on was really smack on. Right? People weren't looking past those 20, you know, offered uh, points that, that many times. And in fact, it was only five of the 37 users um, who responded uh, and added an extra response. So that was really interesting. So, okay, um, let's have a look. User experience, as I said, it rates really high. 35 out of 37 voted on ease of use. You can see that the next two points down there uh, all get above 50%, easy searchability, easy preview. Now then, really surprising, um, responsive design, global access, mobility, you know, ability to access this from any device anywhere, 40%, didn't rate highly. You know, not, not off the bottom of the chart, not in the top 10. Uh, it would be in the uh, 15 to 10 to 15 uh, area. Um, you know, so okay, I'm, and I find that surprising, I must admit. I would have said a lot more users are um, using mobility devices like uh, tablets and things like that for their dam more frequently. I can think of several organisations uh, that only have tablets and are using the dam and it's really important for them. Okay then, so that, that surprised me, uh, but that, that's what people voted for. And you can see the two additional po points that people asked for was speed. All right. Okay, maybe we missed that one. Maybe for user experience, we should have said speed of responsiveness. Okay, I, I would totally agree that maybe that's something we should have put in the user experience. Uh, the next one, modern UI, just like the other apps I have. Well, I, I put that into ease of use, right? So I think they're really putting another vote in there for ease of use. They want to have something that they don't need to sit down and have to work out how to use it. It is intuitive, right? It's um, it's you know pick it up and run with it. So you know that's that's really interesting. Okay, moving down functionality. Remember, functionality is discrete sort of 
menu options, you might have thought, and it was the area that was voted least. And you can see, highest anything got voted there was 72. It didn't even make it into the three quarters, 27 responses, and that was the sharing one. Uh, automation, bulk metadata, uh, they featured there in the top 10. And then we have by far the largest uh, range here. There's six of them there. Um, these all feature pretty much in the you know, under 15 to 20 or something like that. And you can see you know, people weren't that interested in file conversion. I find that, that this one here, cropping, I'm actually stunned at that. Um, I would have said the ability to crop an image before download would have been in the top 10. And it was number 19. Okay, got that one. Um, really interesting. And that's where I learned from a lot of these responses. People really just want to go from the original asset. They don't feel that need to crop the original asset is really important. Okay, uh, you can see people added two extra comments here. Uh, video clipping, okay, I agree with that. Maybe we should have put it that in there, uh, but I would have said that would have rated after cropping a static image, so maybe we could have, but it would have been right at the bottom of the list. And uh, ability to share to social media, you know, that's the sharing one that, that uh, was up there in the user experience and, and item number, what was it, four or something like that. Um, Yes, so yeah, ability to share out to social media and uh, this is where a lot of content is going and it really shows you that you know a dam is all about the media and how you share media is out via social media channels. So, yeah, it's really, really interesting. Okay, and capabilities, remember these are overall uh, capabilities. This is the one which had uh, four of the answers uh, fitted into the top 10, uh, integration. 78%, so the, the second highest cited one, permissions, again above 75%, um, and you know, a range of things in there. Ones that didn't make it into the top 10 um, were things like usage reporting, right? okay. Secure storage and built-in back, backups. Um, of course you have to have those, and I would say why weren't they voted so highly? I would say that's getting down to the respondents assume that that has to be working, right? You couldn't have poor storage when and lose content, surely, you know? Um, so maybe it's just not front of mind there. Um, but you can see they were not high in the list of what people wanted to know about. And what are the, this one had four extra areas. Uh, now then, that, when we looked at the response there, very important, but it's never been acknowledged, is the integration one, okay? Uh, we, we check back on that response. So yeah, that's the person pushing the integration uh, response again. Fabulous. Uh, data extraction for custom reports. Interesting. And usage reports didn't get into the top 10. Multilingual. Now then, I, I should, should make a little statement here about how we actually shared this out. We pushed out this survey onto a whole range of standard social media platforms. Um, yep, sure our users knew about the survey and probably answered. Uh, but I would say more than 50% of our answers came from the uh, general population of BAM users out there. So this person, multilingual, outside of Australia, uh, maybe in Asia, maybe in Europe, where multilingual is very important because you need to understand the, um, the metadata. Interoperability is another vote for integration, I believe. Uh, easiness to export and import, ease of use maybe, exporting and importing. Interesting that this point up here, data extraction also, so people really want to pull content out of the dam as well. Very interesting. So, you know, that's more interoperability and integration. And um, now, I really love this last point, and this is how I'm going to wrap up the um, webinar today. And this one was all about uh, people being able to manage requests for additional content. That's really great. If you think about a DAM is all about content management, and here we're going to use a DAM as a platform for managing how people are going to request additional content. It's really going to become a hub, like I said earlier, uh, with the uh, second point of integration, that digital asset management should be really viewed as infrastructure in an organization. And yeah, okay, maybe you add features to that DAM system that allows it to fulfill its purpose, and one of those features should be uh, having content request solutions uh, inbuilt into it. So that's really good. 
Alrighty, okay then, so that's my 40 minutes up. Um, now then, hey, I've been going for all of this time, not many questions out there, folks, so there's, there's stuff in a so people logged in. Um, you know, I hope you're all having a good time there. Now then, I, I will wrap up in a moment or so, so if you uh, do want, want to ask any questions, please ask them now. Uh, just a few comments here, as said before, for those people that logged on recent, uh, uh, late, uh, missed the beginning uh, entree. So if you go to our general website, databasics.com.au, uh, you can see over here our news blog, and when you go over to our blog, you'll see this uh, top 10 most important features will be there. And with the recording that was being done today, Entra will put a little note here to say that a recording is available so you can go back to this at any time, refer your uh, friends, your collaborators, and other people that you worked with uh, to there. Okay then, um, now then, uh, I, we haven't picked the topic of our next webinar. Um, it's, I know one of the current uh, request is that we do one on the flight product and look at the general features of flight and so we might be doing that uh, next month in um, that'll be July or maybe in like late August uh, and you'll hear about that in all of the usual places I'm sure we'll push that out and communicate um, information on that so um, without further ado, I would like to thank everybody for joining in on the webinar today. I hope you got a lot out of it. Uh, we definitely got a lot out of running this survey and putting together the responses and um, hope to hear from you um, further. And yes, thank you too. Bye.